So we have uh, Doug Warren from Ipsos, and he will give us an overview of the active life study. I think we just have to find yours. Ah, uh, there we page. go. Okay. Yeah, and Doug is an associate director in public affairs team at Ipsos. He directs the active life survey on behalf of Sports England and has worked on it since 2016. And he also works on a number of other large health studies. Is that with you? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the active lives surveys of adults and children and young people and I'm going to be covering a little bit about how the surveys work, um, what data they collect and how you can get your hands on that data should you wish to. So the active lives surveys um, which carried out by Ipsos on behalf of Sport England, um, they capture a unique and comprehensive view of how many people in England are active how they're active, what um, particular things they do. They are two separate surveys, um, one of adults age 16 plus and one of children and young people. The survey of adults was set up first. It was a successor for the active people survey, um, which ran from 2006. That used a telephone um, approach and it was a landline only sample. So Sport England recognized that with the growth of mobile only households, um, it represented a risk to the survey of the sample becoming less representative over time, and we could actually see that happening. Um, as such, they, need, they needed to review the methodology they were using to collect their data. That review um, led to the establishment of the Active Lives Survey as a replacement for active people using a push-to-web approach. Now, recognising that that change would mean a break in the continuity of their data. Sport England wanted to take advantage of that um, to think about the surveys more generally, the data they were collecting. Alongside that, their remit had expanded to also um, be responsible for the activity levels of children and young people from the ages of five upwards. Um, so they knew they needed to start collecting data among those age groups. Um, as such, they commissioned Ipsos to carry out an evidence review to look at the feasibility of collecting um, data among children as young as five. Um, that led to the world-leading survey of uh, children and young people, which is kind of the first study of its kind to collect activity data um, it, on a large scale uh, among children from five upwards. So both surveys are cross-sectional in design. They're designed to collect, um, provide a robust sample of data which can be analysed down to local authority level. Um, so we're aiming to achieve around 500 interviews per local authority um, for the adult survey and around 300 per local authority um, in the child and young person survey. Um, now, the data is collected year round because obviously what we're looking at is not just overall activity levels but participation in specific sports, therefore we don't want to bias our data by having a kind of a single point in time. We need to make sure that we're accounting for seasonality of participation and activity. Um, for the adult survey, what that means in practice is monthly field work. Um, but we're sending out invitations uh, to people um, on the child survey. Uh, that's termly field work across the academic year. The adult survey uses a push to web design, um, whereby we're sampling households from the Royal Mail's post postcode address file, so it provides a, a comprehensive um, list of households within England. Um, we're then using a push to web design to invite people to participate in an online survey, um, with a post uh, paper questionnaire being sent out within the third mailing for non-respondents, um, should they wish to complete with that method. The Survey of children and young people use an in-school approach. Um, schools are recruited by active partnerships, so we um, take a sample of uh, 10, uh, 10 junior and 10 secondary schools per local authority um, within a school year, and a selection of uh, year groups are chosen for each school and their participation is assigned randomly to a term um, so that we keep up that, that kind of random selection of, um, of participation. Um, sorry, very dry mouth. Um, in terms of the questionnaires then, for the adult survey we have uh, an online survey and a 
paper questionnaire. The paper questionnaire is slightly simplified compared to the online survey. That's simply constraints of space and sophistication of routing. The, uh, sorry, that probably sounds horrendous with a microphone. Um, the child and young person survey uses four questionnaires, essentially. Um, for children in one, years one and two, they have a very simple questionnaire, um, which is just primarily looking at their attitudes towards sports and activity and their well-being. Um, for children in years three to 11, they have a, a single questionnaire with some variation by year group. Um, the children in years one to two, um, we also send a questionnaire to their parents to collect a more accurate um, assessment of their activity levels. Um, finally, we also select one teacher um, within the school, or rather we don't select them, the school selects them, and they're provided with a questionnaire which looks at um, the school's provision um, of PE, healthy eating, um, and things such as that. So the surveys capture data across a wide range of measures. And there is variance um, across the two surveys, um, but they are broadly consistent in, in the types of data we're collecting. First and foremost, the Active Lives surveys gives a headline measure of the proportion of people um, who are meeting the CMO guidelines for activity within England. And there are separate guidelines for adults and children, young people for adults. It's a 150 plus minutes of moderate equivalent activity per week. Um, for children and young people, it's an average of 60 minutes per day across the week. And so we're looking at how we can capture that data um, within each of those surveys. Alongside that, we capture a wide range of activity data. I'm going to come on to that in a bit more in the next slide. Um, we also capture well-being metrics um, using the standard ONS well-being uh, measures along with loneliness um, and social and community cohesion. Okay, I better race on. Um, and they also capture people's attitudes towards uh, sport and activity. In the adult survey, that's using the standard um, sort of attitudinal things of uh, capability, opportunity, motivation to kind of lead to the sort of behavioral picture. Um, for the child and young person survey, it looks at the four factors, uh, four elements of physical literacy. So motivation, confidence, competence, and knowledge. The surveys are designed, so this is an, an image of the postal questionnaire. Um, it does look better online, um, where it's designed to be a sort of a device agnostic questionnaire. Um, the surveys are designed to capture data at individual activity levels. So people are shown a list of activities that they may have done in the last year. For those they've completed in the last year, they're then asked, have you done them in the last 28 days? If you've done them in the last 28 days, you're then asked, okay, how many sessions? How long was your average session? How intense were your sessions? Um, on the online survey, we then are able to capture a bit more um, information about um, settings and things such as that. Um, but what it means is we're capturing data at a very granular level for specific activities. To create our headline metrics then, we're just aggregating them across all the activities people do to give um, hopefully the most uh, accurate picture that we can. We're building a picture then not just of how active people are, but how they're being active, um, where and who with. Um, and that allows Sport England and the national governing bodies who they partner with um, to understand the participation levels of sport over time and seasonally. As I said earlier, both surveys are designed to allow analysis at local authority level, so it means um, we do have a lot of data um, at, at small geographic levels. Um, we're not just producing all England level, it also means we have um, geographic level statistics like rurality and deprivation, and we're able to analyse the data um, in a robust way for those. Um, both surveys also contain a range of demographic questions. Um, that helps Sport England to meet its, one of its core strategic objectives of understanding activity within a, a place and a person-based context. Um, that we're looking at things then like age, gender, ethnicity, sexuality, disability and health, as well as working status, 
educational attainment and socioeconomic classification. And it enables us to understand inequalities across de demographic groups. And those insights have fed into um, Sport England's strategy um, leading to campaigns such as This Girl Can and We Are Undefeatable. Um, now, I should say we don't publish all of the demographic data on the data archive, um, but it can be accessed at request potentially um, from Sport England. The surveys have both been running quite a long time now. The adult survey has been running since November 2015. Um, so we do have a lot of data. Both surveys were able to continue throughout the pandemic um, because of the, um, the methodology we're using. It, it, it was uninterrupted. Um, and it means we have a picture of how activity levels were changed throughout the pandemic. So, for example, we could see that the types of activities people were doing were changing radically. Um, things like active travel obviously fell off a cliff because people were no longer commuting. But also team sports or anything that would be affected by the rule of six um, all fell off and there was replacement, so things like um, park run um, went up massively. Um, but over the longer term, what we've seen is that while activity levels for England have bounced back slightly, um, inequalities have in some instances been entrenched. Um, so for example, um, area level deprivation, those from most deprived areas um, are um, struggling to recover their activity levels. And I'm going to skip this side uh, slide because I don't think I have time, but what I will say is if you do want to find out more, um, the data is archived annually um, through the uh, UK Data Service. Um, that includes data files, technical reports, code books, user guides, all the things you would normally expect to see. Annual reports are published on Sport England's websites. Those include data tables. They also produce spotlight reports to look at topics of particular interest and have produced an analysis tool um, which is available on that website, which allows you to do um, kind of simple cross tabulations, produce maps of um, area level statistics. Thank you.